Good morning and welcome to the service for the difference it's the 23rd of april 2023 it is our third sunday of easter the season of easter um, first sunday being resurrection sunday and it takes us all the way up until pentecost as we celebrate the holy spirit that was poured out on on the believers on the day of of pentecost and we are looking in the season of easter at what it means for us as believers to be a part of the royal priesthood and we get that from 1 Peter 2, from verse 9 and verse 10, where Peter's speaking to the believers. He says, you know, as, as believers, you are a chosen people. You're a royal priesthood. You, you're a holy nation. You are, you are God's special possession so that you can declare the praises of, of God because he called you out of darkness. He called you into his wonderful light. You know, there was a time where, where you weren't anybody. You were no one. But now you are the people of God. Once you... You didn't know mercy, but now you've received mercy. Um, and so we are a part of the royal priesthood and we are looking in the season of Easter at what that means for us, what it looks like for us. And we're reading today from Psalm 116. We're going to read from verse 1 to verse 4 and again from verse 12 to verse 19. Just again the psalm that speaks of how I love the Lord, of how God has heard my cry for mercy, how God has been present to me always. Um, and so... The only thing I have to offer God and the only thing worthy of offering God is my thanks. And I'm going to shout his praises and tell people what he has done for me when we gather together as a community. 
Now we're also going to be reading from Acts chapter 2. Um, we're going to read the second half of the reading that we did last week. Um, Acts chapter 2 verse 14, Peter begins explaining what has taken place now with the Holy Spirit that has come down on the believers. Um, and then he continued the conversation about how the religious leaders, those who, who, who believe in God, were the ones who crucified Jesus. And they are cut to the heart. Today we are focusing on that part of the reading where they're saying, so what must we do? And he says, repent um, and be baptized in the name of Jesus. Be baptized in water for the forgiveness of sins um, and do it in the name of Jesus because that's the name that brings salvation. And then we're going to also be reading from Luke chapter 24. We're going to read from verse 13 to verse 35. Um, Jesus has risen from the dead. And last week we read about how he appeared to his disciples on the evening of the first day of the week. And this week we are reading about what happened in the afternoon as Jesus joins two of the disciples, not the twelve, um, not two of the twelve, but, but two of those from the outer circle, Cleopas and, and another one. They're heading home. They're going towards Emmaus and he joins them on the road to Emmaus and he has this conversation. He opens up scripture for them and explains everything that has happened from, from scripture. And then he breaks bread with them. They recognize who he is. They run back to tell the other disciples um, that they have, have met with Jesus. And again, I'm going to ask that you put this on pause as you read through those readings. And as you read through them, we give God thanks for them. And we pray that he will bless it to us as we reflect on it in, in, this, in this moment. As I said earlier, we are focusing in this season of, of Easter, what it means for us who claim allegiance to Jesus. Who, who trust in, in his work of making peace with us um, and who trust that that work is, is enough. We, we are looking at what it means for us who form a part of the priesthood of all believers because if we claim allegiance to Christ, if we believe in Christ as, as our Lord and as our Savior, it means we're a part of the priesthood of all believers. We're a part of the royal priesthood and we are all priests. There is no gender limitation. There is no age category. Everybody who is in love with God is somebody who brings the world before God, is somebody who presents God to the world. And so every single one of us is a priest, and so we should all be busy with the work that Christ has set before us by doing what the Holy Spirit has gifted us to do. And then I think I think we have seen um, throughout the history of the world, throughout, throughout Scripture, that there is a problem with those who step up as priests. Um, and again, we, we're all priests, but the problem is that as priests, you know, we begin to decide for ourselves who is worthy of God's love. We begin to decide for ourselves who is not worthy of God's love. We, we, we decide what a believer looks like. We, we, we decide for ourselves what a believer does. And so very quickly, we become the religious leaders that put Jesus to death in the name of God. Very quickly, we become those who would kill people of, of other faiths in the name of Jesus. Or who would put people of other denominations even down. In the, in the name of, of Jesus. And so we very quickly forget the love that has driven us into the arms of Christ. And instead of inviting people into, into a relationship with God because we're in love with them, because we're in love with God, you know, we take out a stick. And, and with that stick, we, we try and drive them into the presence of God through, through fear. Or we try and drive them out of the presence of God through, through fear. And so today's readings really just help us understand what it means to remain connected to, to the one who has called us into, into this ministry, into the ministry of being a priest, of presenting people to God and of presenting God to, to people. Um, and in the story of the two disciples, Cleopas and his friend, that are on the way to, to Emmaus, Jesus meets with them. It's a beautiful reminder for us to, to continue to remain open you know, to the working of God. As a priest, don't decide for yourself how God will work, who God is going to work in. Just remain open to the work that God is doing and the work that he is inviting you to be a part of. Cleopas and his friend, he, they're returning home because they, they haven't really experienced the, the resurrection. You know, Jesus' death has taken place. They've heard that the grave was empty. They've heard that the angels appeared to, to, to the woman um, and to the, to the disciples, Peter and John, as we know, um, appeared to them saying that Jesus is alive. But, but somehow, you know, these two were waiting for something else. They had hoped. But their hopes had been dashed. And so now they're returning to, to their old lives. It's, for them, it's, it's now business as usual. You, and, and they do know a lot, lot about Christ. They are not part of the 12 disciples. But obviously, they're, they're a closer group of disciples to Jesus than those who are just on the outskirts. 
Um, they must have been close to the group to, to know the events until that morning because they knew their woman had spoken, the angels had spoken back, two of the disciples had gone, they knew that information. And so they were close enough to know that kind of stuff. Um, and they were close enough to Christ to, to recognize Christ when he broke the bread at the table. Um, they, 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 we know that they, they're good Jews, they care a lot, um, they are hospitable Jews, they invite Jesus in to spend the night with them. We know they're faithful, um, but we also know that they are not aware, they're not expectant. They, they're trying to understand, but, but they obviously didn't take to heart what the woman had said, and they obviously left before Peter got back and, and gave his report of how Jesus had met with him, because they only hear that report in the evening when they get back to, to the locked room. And so they experienced Christ at the table because they had become open to Christ as he spoke with them on, on the road to Emmaus. And, and for whatever reason that they didn't recognize him, you know, they, their hearts knew that there was something here. And the most incredible thing in the story is that Christ meets with them where they are. He goes to fetch two disciples who, who don't belong to the twelve, two disciples who are a part of the outer group of disciples, and, and they're on their way home, and, and he meets with them because he needs them to share their experience of Christ with, with the other disciples. And so Christ is at work in so many ways. He is at work in so many places. And, and at no point can you and I ever decide for God how God must work and where God is going to work. He, he is always busy, and He is always busy everywhere. God is aware of what's going on, and He's, and he's aware of what needs to be done, and he, and he doesn't ask us to decide for Him where He's going to work. He just invites us to join Him in, in what He's already doing. And so don't, don't decide where God is going to work. Just remain open. As, as a part of the priesthood of all believers, as a priest, just remain open to the working of God so that you can see it when it is taking place and so that you can testify to it. When, when you see it taking place. And, and as a priest, be bold in your faith. Own your faith. You are no longer bound by, by an empty way of life. You, are, you, you no longer have to be bound from futile practices. Um, we read that in Peter. You know, from all those habits, from all those addictions, from all those sins that, that point away from God. We, we've been saved from ourselves. And if you're not sure what it means to be saved, just think of yourself as somebody who has fallen overboard um, in the middle of the sea. A life raft is, is thrown out after you, but you've got to climb into the life raft in order to save yourself. You know, it's the, it's the life raft that saves you, but you've got to make some effort to, to realize the potential the life raft has, has to save you. And so we have to ask Christ to save us in order to affect the potential of, of his salvation. We can, we can know that the raft is there. We can know that it can save us. We can, we can know that it's our only hope of survival, but if we don't climb into it, you know, if we continue to tread water, what, what good is that going to do us? 3,000 people in the story of Acts, as we read from Acts chapter 2, 3,000 people climbed into the lifeboat that day. 3,000 people realized that they, they weren't going to be able to tread water forever. And so the decision had to be made, and they had to act on that decision. And so being saved is about us seeing Christ. It's, it's about us understanding a little of what He means for us. It's about us acknowledging that we need to be saved from this empty way of life, that we need to be saved from an emptiness, and we need to be saved to a fullness, and we, and we need to accept the social and the public consequences of, of the decision we make to receive the gift that Christ has already given to us. The disciples on the road to, to Emmaus, you know, they cut to the heart. They, they felt their hearts burning. And, and that's God's Spirit speaking to our, our spirit. You know, we're convicted that Jesus is the Lord. We, we're convicted that Jesus is the one who, who will redeem us. Um, and we're convicted in our hearts. And again, as we speak of heart from Scripture, it's, it's not an emotional response. The heart is the center of reasoning. It's the center of, of decision making. And so we are convicted. In other language, we are convicted that Christ is, is the one who can redeem us. We are convicted that God has made peace with us through the work of Christ. In, in Acts, Peter is telling them to, to repent because they're saying, what must we do to be saved? What can we do to fix it? And Peter says, you need to repent. And, and repentance is a physical act of turning away from something and, and turning towards something else. It's the act of, of returning to God um, in terms of our faith. It's, it's not an apology. It's, it's a changed life. And it's a changed life not because 
an external source is directing us, but because we are convicted that this is what we need to do. We are convicted that where we are now and what we are doing now is not bringing life. We are convicted that there is something better for us um, and there is something that we could be doing that could be bringing life instead of destroying life. And so he says to them, you need to repent and then you need to be baptized with water for the forgiveness of sins. In other words, you need to publicly pledge your allegiance to Jesus and affirm him as, as Christ. Um, and baptism for us is a symbol of dying with Christ. We've spoken of this before. It's a symbol of dying with Christ and of being raised with him. And, and this would, would be very, very difficult for the believers in the early church because it's going gonna, it's gonna to cost them so much. As Jews, they believed they never had to repent because they were God's chosen people. And now they are recognizing that all that they've, they've come to believe about themselves as the chosen people is exactly the stuff that has got gotten in the way of them actually being God's chosen people. And so they needed to change the way that they thought. They needed to, to allow God to help them change the way that they live. For them to be baptized in Christ's name would be a radical affirmation of, of faith. It would be a complete break from, from their old way of life. And, and if you've ever felt that, you know, you don't need to repent of anything, I really just want to encourage you, you know, let, let God search you for for the sin that is within you, the sin that, that you need to repent of. Allow God to help you break with your old way of life as He continues to do the work of transformation in you so that your life will be creative as He is, that your life will bring life and offer life and add value to the world instead of just taking from the world. And so own your faith. Own your faith and, and live what you have heard. As a priest, you need to live what you have heard, you need to live the faith that you have been convicted of. You know, as Jesus explains to, to the two on the road to Emmaus, and again as Peter begins to preach to, to those who would become believers on the day of Pentecost, they're both working from the premise that the Scriptures are true. For them, it can be no other way. You know, it's, it's the Word of God. And, and we do know that Scriptures have absolutely no authority for somebody who doesn't believe in, in God. Christ's resurrection is only going to be manifest for the people who don't believe in God if it is revealed in the community, if it is revealed in, in the individual. They will trust scriptures when they see the evidence of scripture in, in a changed life. Our lives become the book cover for the gospel that lies within. We are the appetizer for the main meal who, who is Christ. We are proof of Christ's resurrection and of our rebirth. And, and we're proof of that by the way in which we love each other. You know, when, when we love each other deeply from the heart, not a feeling, but a decision. It's, it's not something that's in passing, but it, when, when our love becomes our driving force, then we are the proof of Christ's resurrection. We are the proof of our own rebirth. Scripture is real because it's real to us. Scripture is applicable because it's applicable to, to us. You know, Jesus has come and he has touched us as we needed him to touch us. And, and he's going to do the same for all of those who are searching for him. Christ has promised the gift of the Holy Spirit, that, that spirit that is at work in us, that spirit that is at work in others. He has promised the gift of the Holy Spirit. And, and you and I, we, we, as priests, we are the conduit for, for the Holy Spirit to be able to work. We are the body. We are the hands of Christ. And so the word of hope and the, and the word that brings life is, is for all people. And so you and I, as priests, we, we just need to be obedient to God. When God calls you to share that hope, that life, through word and, and through deed. We, we recognize Christ in the proclamation of the word. We, we recognize Christ as he opens scripture up for us. Because the Bible is still translated for us by the Holy Spirit. We recognize Christ in the breaking of the bread. We recognize Christ in our meeting together. We recognize him in our transformed natures. And so as a priest who belongs to the royal priesthood, the priesthood of all believers, own your faith and allow your faith to speak of the love relationship that you have with our only living God. And again, I just want to read from 1 Peter 2 verse 9 verse 10. Just as a believer... You are a chosen person. You're a part of the royal priesthood. You, you're a part of the holy nation. You are God's special possession so that you may declare the praises of, of God because God has called you out of darkness 
He has called you into His wonderful light. You know, once you, you didn't belong to anyone, to anywhere, but now you are the people of God. Once you hadn't received mercy, now you have received mercy. Pray with me. And so, Lord God, again, we ask that we would be to you a, a royal priesthood, that you would help us to, to own our faith. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask that you would drive out everything that is not of you from our hearts. Help us to return to you with open hearts, with, with open minds, with open hands, with, with open arms. Help us, help us, Lord God, to draw all of your creation back into the glory of your light. Help us to draw all of creation back into the heart of your healing and your life-giving love. And we pray this in your precious, precious name. Amen.